Hey everyone, it's Abby and welcome back to the channel. Before we begin this video, I wanted to say a very, very big thank you to everyone who came by the New York Stationery Fest and San Francisco International Pen Show. I've had a very, very busy August and it was lovely to meet. I got to meet a lot of you actually. Thanks so much for um, telling me that you watch my videos. I really appreciate it. It's nice to put a face to every name that I've seen here in the comments or just like by liking and watching and viewing my videos. I really appreciate it. Thanks also to all of the workshop attendees who signed up for both of my workshops. I really, really am grateful and it was a very busy month. I'm still unpacking from everything that had happened. It was very social actually for someone like me who is very much an introvert. I think it was a lot of overstimulation, over socializing towards the end of the trip. So this September, I'm really, really looking forward to kind of just slow down a bit at work. And that also leads us to a couple of work updates over here on our creative community. So first things first, on Patreon, I'm actually on pause. Um, that means that um, if you will join this month's Patreon, there won't be any new content. So it's up to you if you would like to join. However, you get to access four years of content over on my Patreon Art Club. I don't delete it specifically to the tiers. So you'll be able to access, if you join the journal tier, you'll be able to access all the journal tours from the past. Um, I would just say that the mail tier, you won't be able to access the previous mail because I send it every month. That being said, um, existing Patreon members won't be charged. So it's a way for just for me to just like kind of decompress from a lot of the work that's been ongoing. And I probably work three or four times as much last August. And I think in order for me to kind of regulate back into my routine this September, I just work. I am working, but I'm working on other deadlines, which also leads to my next announcement. So uh, moving forward, you might encounter a lot of videos over here on my channel where it actually is sponsored by a certain brand or company or service. So I'd like to let you know that I am slowly working on putting out more sponsored videos. Um, to be transparent with you, I've always wanted to dive into this particular um, category of creating videos and being a creator. And the reason I'm doing this is also, to be also honest with you, it's really to get a leverage more of how I can earn more financially as an artist and be able to pay my bills and also to be able to travel and do all of these things to nurture my creativity. So I would really appreciate if you can support this endeavor. Um, yeah, I also will make sure that all of the brands that I pick Actually, coming from a degree in advertising, this feels like a full circle moment because now I get to actually create ads and create content based on, I wouldn't say what I learned in school because it's like 10 years since I graduated college, but um, I definitely will only pick brands that I 100% trust and support. I'm sure you know that from me. I'm very picky with the people I work with and I'm also very straightforward if I like something or if I, or if I don't. Like if I don't like something, it will not sit well with me. I think I stand by my principles on that front. So yeah, um, not all videos will be sponsored but you'll be seeing a couple of them here and there and I am looking forward to be working on these because I have always 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 wanted to see what other things I can do over here on YouTube and YouTube has always been my no pressure to grow channel for some reason because every video I put out is something that is made with labor of love me and my video editor we work hand in hand in putting together all of these videos for you so I do hope you appreciate it and I would also want to be compensated more, not just for me, but also for my video editor and getting sponsorships is one way that will be funded to be able to create these videos for you to enjoy. So yeah, that's it for this little announcement. Um, this video is going to be, it was hard to pick, but this video is going to be my summer stationary favorites. I haven't done stationary favorites in a while and I actually, don't like to do a lot of haul videos right now because that's something that's very out of principle for me. I don't 
like the whole idea of the planner and journaling committee like getting into overconsumption and for me i don't have that much stuff so i don't like to talk about hauls in general but i will share with you 10 of my absolute favorite products from this year because they have served me well and if they have served me well i hope that they will also serve you well so make sure to keep watching to know more about each of my stationary favorites it was definitely hard to pick favorites but i narrowed down 10 items that I really, really enjoyed throughout the summer, especially during my trips. Some of them I did get from the trip and some I have gotten earlier in the summer. But to start off, let's talk about these clear stamps from Everyday Explorers Co. So these were kindly gifted to me by Christine, my biz bestie. And these are actually my personal favorites from the ones that she gave me. I believe this has been available for a while and then this is new so starting off with this it's called daily details and as you can see with the prompts i can already imagine using this as frequently as i can not just for daily journaling but also for travel journaling um, during the pen show and stationery fest when people ask me what i recommend from the stock that christine had sold at her table i would always recommend this because a lot of people always ask about having a stamp set that had like covered a lot of different topics and prompts and for here you have let's explore you also have documented and i do like that word so i think that um i do play favorites in that department there's also the story today's update in the moment and there's like a lot of prompts that you can definitely use with regards to this stamp set i have done some stamping over on my travel journal so i'll show you a couple pages later the next one is the sf pen show exclusive stamp set and as you can see it's a mini size which is half of this size and it covers a lot of uh, different prompts and graphics and stamps especially if you're going to be journaling about the event and i know that's something a lot of you do so this is one of my favorite uh, stamp sets it's also still available at the everyday explorers code website they also have the new york stationery fest one um, but i wanted to use this and show you a little stamping demo because i also picked up this shachihata ink pad um this isn't new in particular but i actually got this at m lovewell during my trip to socal because i was looking for a red ink because usually my inks are brown which i don't mind also this is the bigger ones these are the shachihata regular sized ones and this is the mini travel sized ones and i just wanted something a bit bright and a bit more vibrant and not just all brown so i decided to get this this is not to be mistaken with the original red which says here it's hongsa this is not hongsa um this is a bit more deep so i personally like it more it's not too bright and i think it captures um, a lot of the ideal red I want on my journal pages as well and we have a clear block so I thought to do a little demo here's a little peek of my travel journal it hasn't actually been complete I am still working on it I'm taking some time to do it because I don't want to feel so pressured to finish it all at once but um, I wanted to show you this in the moment stamp where I used the daily details one over here and then I did like carve out a little space here where I could stamp the probably this official record and let's go ahead and do that one of the things I also want to be better at is actually to stamp more frequently I don't think I do it enough only because I don't think it's my best, um, I'm not the best at it. So I am still learning in that department. So we have a little empty space right here. So let's just... not my best let's just say 
it adds character. But also it's my fault because I realized I put the TN on the cover and so it doesn't really capture all of the details. Oh well. Next we have fountain pens, inks, cases, and the like. And obviously this one is catching your eye. This is the rickshaw three-pen koozie that I designed as part of the Stationery Fest collection with Job of Job's Journal. So this is really gorgeous inside. It has a nice orange um, inner lining and it has three pens. Actually, two of them are part of my favorites. And I have made a video talking about the design process of this, but yeah, I really wanted to center in on the pun, um, doing all right, as you can see here. And at the back, you have some uh, fountain pen essentials and parts and materials. I also loved working with this particular shade of like green, orange, yellow, very retro, very still in my um, my line of favorite colors and aesthetic direction, creative direction. So with this, I want to share with you two of my favorite pens that I don't think I've actually talked that much about in this channel yet because one is fairly new and well, the other one is also quite new. So I have two new pens from this summer. So starting off with this, this is the Twisby Eco in Cream. I am super happy to have a Twisby because I haven't had Twisby since 2020, I would say 2021. So I did get a Twisby Eco Clear as one of my first fountain pens, but I kind of wrecked it in a bad way. Like I, um, I deconstructed and took out all the parts and it was a struggle to get it back in. Something about me wanting to clean the the fill the filler area because I think one of the inks I used at the time had stained the body. But in general, I also destashed a lot of my pens that had silver trim and I just wanted my pens to have either gold or rose gold trim. So this is definitely a nice addition to my fountain pen collection. And what can I say? Twisby writes really well. It's very reliable. I super like how it writes. I got an extra fine nib and I bought this at M. Lovewell. The next pen was not part of my 2024 bingo card. However, um, this was like maybe the day after stationary fest i went to yoseka with christine and we did a little shopping and i think she was looking at inks and i was like i was asking me i was like by chance do you actually have the yoseka home pen available at the store and they did have it available and i wanted to get this um from last year actually like 2023 when i visited because i think it was the same time that the pen had come out but I remember there were some discrepancies with the um, pens coming out in a different shade of gold and I didn't want to risk it at the time. So I ended up buying a different pen. I actually bought this one, which I still love. I thought of destashing it, but I actually still love it. The um, Nagasawa Gearske pen. And this is a, actually a pro gear and it has a really nice uh, pink gold uh, trim so I really still love this and it's my only demonstrator pen so yeah I decided to buy the sailor well the Yoseka home pen and it's a sailor pro gear slim I actually realized as much as the pro gear does write smoothly like 21k and everything I think I still prefer the slimness of the pro gear slim and just it being a bit more compact and easy to bring around with me obviously this is such a pretty pretty color and I'm so excited to be using this on my daily rotation because it's just really elegant and I'm always up for pens that look a certain way and obviously this has hit the spot and I'm very happy I finally got to get my own home pen. Before we swatch everything, I'll just show you the rest of my favorites in this category. So. Over at Stationery Fest, I got to meet the lovely folks of Galen Leather. So shout out to Yunus. I finally met Yunus and the Galen Leather crew. We were chatting a bit and he was kind enough to uh, gift me a couple of items from their, their product line. So 
I don't remember why he handed me this but I also realized that I this has been on my list for a while. This is actually an undyed slip and zip case and I'm so excited for it to actually turn a bit more brown. But I do love this like nude, it's very yummy nude color. So it's a really handy zip case and one of the reasons I really like this is actually this one that you can take out. You can obviously store your pens inside as well and not only are they great to like hold the pens together, especially if you have a case like this, but just like to just put on your desk, like I can just like, well, it's also great for photos, but like I can imagine just putting my pens here and having like, having it like lay on my desk in case I need to reach for them. So I'm really excited to fill this in and add, hmm, I wonder what other pen should I add here? So apart from that, it being a zip case is really handy because in case I have other pens or other tools that I want, like ruler or scissors, I can definitely put it at the back of this, um, the pen, so then the pens won't get scratched on. So then ultimately it will be comfortable for everyone, everyone inside the zip case. I've been looking for this ink for a really long time and I've heard really good things about it. So this is the Lennon Turbar Sesame Oil. So during the Stationery Fest, I think there was one time where Christine was gonna go buy at um, Lennon Tool Bar, so I just asked her, can you just get me a bottle of sesame oil while I watch over your table? So I finally got it, and it's actually inked in my um, Lamy Safari in cream. You can tell I have a type. I mean, look at all of them. So I will show you a swatch of it, but I also wanted to swatch it over here. This is actually a Weringul swatch card that I got from Maidu when I was in... Let's start with swatching the sesame oil ink. I feel like it's always tricky to um, see what ink swatches look like on camera because of all the settings and everything. In cream, in MF, and I am using a Kobe. 16 nada brown i inked this at job's actually so it's nice it's a nice um reliable brown very dark you can see how dark it is compared to the sesame oil one Ding oolong tea so min suggested this because of the ends of this pen having like similar color to dong ding oolong tea also, this is a new ink that my cousin gifted me because he said he was going to be at um, Ankora store in Ginza in Tokyo. So I was like, could you get me one of those um, Sailor Ankora inks? I think this is the um, Suye. This is the April one. And it has a really nice like Sakura-like color. Not too pink, but just the right amount of pink. Last but not least, we have a couple of miscellaneous items. I don't know why, but I always end up writing my like brainstorming ideas on a field notes or just pocket notebooks in general are, I think I am the target market for that. So on that note, they did re release a couple of uh, memo books and this is a slipcase that came with it, which I really find interesting. Like just filed it here and it's very um, organized. But I want to show you the index edition that they came out with just recently, just this summer. And it's, oh, I, I'm reading it here and it says it's a field note series designed to organize your life. And this one is one of the two sets that came with my package. So I wanted to show you this quickly because I think... For a lot of us, the idea of doing reviews or like media journaling is something that you're probably unsure of or maybe would like to get into, but like you don't want to do the whole setup or you just kind of want to just start writing. And I think this is the answer to that. So this is a 56 page logbook. And what you'll see inside is basically on the left hand side, you can write out whatever movie or TV show or book or podcast or maybe restaurant or cafe. I could go on and on and suggest ideas. Um, brand of coffee, brand of water, 
I don't know, type of chips, type of pens that you have in mind. Um, you can also just write the date over here. And of course, the important one, we have the review part where you can decide how many stars it has. And here it's ideal for like sticking photos or um, tickets or anything, any ephemera. And here on the right hand side, of course, you can journal or log your thoughts about it. I guess that's the best part of this is just you just open it up and then you start writing and I think if you are a food critic or something to that extent or you just have a lot of things that you feel like could be logged inside this book then it's very handy that you can take with you in your purse or in your pocket. I think the only downside is if you journal like with a lot of ephemera this is probably not ideal. As you can see it's very much intended for writing. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's great. It's very straightforward. I think, I don't know what I'm gonna use this for actually, but if you're looking for practical applications, they do have a bunch of options here at the back. Um, I don't have that much pens to mention in general, but I wanted to do a shout out to this specific pen. So this was actually gifted to me by Michelle of Polka.Whimsy. Thanks, Michelle. And actually, she got this at, I think it was M. Lovell's eighth birthday or something. And they had like a build your own uni style fit section. And this is called the Uni Style Fit Meister. And what I like about it is obviously, I told you I have a type. I do like the color. It comes in a nice cream ivory color the body and it has five slots um these are gel slots so i actually chose 0.38 or 0.3 mm um tip size and what i did in order for me to like not forget because the only downside is you really don't know which color is which unless you memorize it but i really don't so i just decided to um put the black here so i use this a lot let me show you what my plotter looks like i used it a lot when i was in the us let's see i think let's see, here's a sample i didn't write that much when i was like busy at events here here's an example where I extensively use the red and the black and I think it served me really well so I really really like it and um, although it doesn't fit the pen loop of um, plotter because I t tend to rotate my pens but right now if I'm using this instead of putting the whole body there I just put the there so it's nice and nifty inside my bag Last but definitely not the least, I wanted to show you um, some stickers. So this is actually my sticker album and I've been really diligent in organizing this and making sure everything here is um, what I really like and what I use as frequently as I can because this is the one I reach out for if I'm updating my Hobonichi Techo. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do a quick shout out to Sarika of Sarika Studio. You probably have heard of her in the journaling community. I actually placed an order um, and had it shipped to our hotel in New York. And she was kind enough to send a lot of additional um, stickers. So thanks so much, Sarika. So these are some of the stickers I have. Everything else is still like scattered amongst my supplies. But I wanted to highlight this specifically because a lot of the stickers, they're all homemade. They're all made by them and it's really well made. The sticker quality is so good. And one of my favorites is actually the brass binder clip stickers. For some reason, it just works on every single journal page that I have. So here's one that I opened that I wanted to show you. So as you can see, I had printed a photo here on uh, a the pizza shop and instead of just pasting on like this rectangular photo which seems a little rigid adding like one of those clip stickers really made a lot of difference i also got one of the sheets where she had like this like push pin pin thing it's really nice it can it adds a lot of um dimension to my journal pages and i think it blends my um journaling style really well so my other um Favorite thing about her stickers is they're slim enough 
that it can actually fit inside the pocket of a traveler's notebook. Like so. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed looking through some of my stationary favorites. If you have your own stationary favorites, it doesn't have to be 10. Maybe like top three. Let me know your top three stationary favorites down below. Not necessarily from this summer, but like in general for the year. I think because before summer, I didn't really actually think about my stationary favorites. I don't think about it that much. This was my only way to kind of package together everything that I have gone through like with my products and with my items, um, especially after the trip because I got a lot of, most of these are actually gifted and I also was able to purchase new products to kind of see how they're integrated with my journaling and documenting journey. So I do hope you enjoy. If you'd like to see a very meaty everything I got from the SF Pentro and Stationery Fest video, it is up um, now on Patreon. It's exclusive to Patreon members only for this month. This is the only um, content that I'll put out that's pretty new and exclusive. So if you would like to check that out, make sure to head to patreon.com slash abc. If you're a Patreon member, then make sure to just check your Patreon because I have probably um, posted it earlier this week. I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead. I think I'm going to schedule back my uploads to Saturdays only because the stress of having to upload on Thursdays or Fridays really like uh, goes back to all of the previous days of uploading. I have debated a lot about uploading less videos but i don't know if i want to do that so i tried to just put in a lot of work in youtube but also not exhaust myself in the process so i do hope you look forward to more fun videos i've been um looking for fellow creators to collaborate with on youtube so i'm also excited about that and now that we are on the last few weeks of summer it's kind of bizarre. It's like, wow, summer is almost over. I'm also looking forward to the colder months. There will be a lot of autumn content because we love autumn. Maybe I'll take you to some walks. I'm slowly like rearranging how I'd like my YouTube channel to look like as well. So if you would see other... So there might be some different types of videos coming here and there, but I really appreciate your support and thank you so much for all the love on the previous videos that I've made. I will see you on the next one and I'll see you online, not just here, but also on Instagram and on Patreon if you're part of my art club. Thank you so much. Always be creating and I'll see you soon. Bye.